A better trade policy against China is a better foreign policy. Trade, the conventional intelligence holds, is politically toxic. That perception has created a hole at the center of US foreign policy. For the last two presidencies, the nation has struggled to progress a compelling vision for global prosperity or strengthen its commercial links to the countries it must rally in a competition with China. Now, however, research by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs indicates that the political fight over trade may be achievable should President Joe Biden choose to join it. Since World War II, trade has been a main part of American leadership. During the Cold War, being a US ally came with a massive economic gain in the form of access to the US market as well as the security gain provided by Washington's military protection. Moscow's clients, by contrast, endured immiseration and subordination. That inequality helped explain why most countries that could choose freely chose the U.S. giving its primacy in a global alliance that contained and defeated the Soviet Union. Now, however, the U.S. is facing a country that has put itself at the hub of commercial networks in Asia and around the world. China is the leading trade partner country for nearly 130 countries. Meanwhile, America's foreign economic policy has become unstimulating. President Donald Trump pulled the U.S. out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a 12-nation deal that represented 40% of global GDP and threatened to damage other accords. His biggest trade initiatives, apart from a promiscuous use of excessive tariffs, were modest revisions of existing accords such as the North American Free Trade Agreement and U.S.-South Korea Trade Pact. Biden claims that America is back, but he has done little in the empire of trade to prove it. There is no indication that he plans to re-enter TPP, now called the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership or CPTPP, despite the massive strategic benefits of doing so. His administration has instead proposed narrower measures, such as a digital trade agreement for Asia and a free trade pact with Taiwan. Even as US officials privately acknowledge that there is no substitute for American participation in the Trans-Pacific group, Biden has made bolder moves elsewhere, such as a 136 nation agreement to establish a minimum corporate tax rate. But he has also implemented by American policies that surely remind some countries of Trump's America first. If the geopolitics of this approach are controversial, the politics initially seem persuasive. Trump's trade bashing was central to his mobilization of grievance. Globalization may not have principally caused the hollowing out of the working and lower middle classes, but strong majorities of Americans believe that it heightened inequality by extremely benefiting the wealthy. It is little wonder that political leaders of both parties have become gun shy on trade. Look closely, however, and a more nuanced picture emerges. According to recent polling, a record level of Americans, 68%, think globalization is, on balance, a good thing. Roughly three quarters say trade is good for consumers, the overall economy, and American standard of living. 60% consider trade to be good for creating American jobs. This isn't a partisan issue. These majorities cut across political lines. To be clear, Americans aren't dogmatic free traders. Large majorities favor preventing commerce with China and banning U.S. companies from selling sensitive technologies to Beijing. The concept of a modern industrial policy is also popular. Nearly 80% want the government to fund research and development so U.S. companies can beat their foreign rivals. The data simply suggests that Americans have sophisticated views. They appreciate the broad economic benefits of commerce, even as they recognize that better powers shouldn't be treated as normal trade partners.